Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to uh, call the Northampton License Commission meeting for Wednesday, October 9th to order. Um, commissioners President Brian Campanelli, Natasha Yakolev, and Helen Kahn want to announce that we are audio video recording at this time. And uh, now would be the time for public comment if there is any. Okay, seeing none, we're going to move on to um, item number three. Uh, application for short-term liquor license for trustees of Forbes Library, DBA Forbes Library, date and time will be Friday, October 11, 2019, 5 to 8 p.m. Location 20 West Street, Hawthorne Gallery, Arts, Council, uh, Biannual Reception, Wine and Malt, and Request uh, Fee Waiver. Hi, can you state your name for the record? Faith Hoffman. All right, thank you for coming. Um, same as usual? Yes. Okay. Uh, I have no. I have no questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Should I go for it? Oh, motion to approve um, the application for short-term liquor license um, for the trustees of Forbes Library as detailed in item three on the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and um, you did you did a few waiver too, right? Oh yes. Yeah, that would Motion also includes a few weight. Okay. Can I possibly pick up tomorrow? Yeah. On Friday? Yep. Okay, great. Thank yep. you. I'll, I'll email you first thing. Great. Thanks. Okay, item four application for short term liquor license abandoned building brewery, LLC, Saturday, October 20th, 2019, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Locations Look Park, 300 North Main Street, Florence, Happy Valley Half Marathon, Wine and Malt. Hi, can you state your name for the record? Sure, uh, Matt Tarlecki for Abandoned Building Brewery. Hi, Matt, thanks for coming. Sure. Um, tell us a little bit about it, how you're going to kind of set up for uh, the alcohol. Sure, so we were the sponsor for this event last year also. Um, it is in, you know, which section of the park it's in, you know? By the pedal boats. Now. By the pedal boats. Mm -hmm. um, so we set up before the race starts, um, each runner gets a ticket, which entitles them to a 12 ounce beer. Um, people are ID'd and wristband before they show up to us. Um, and then it's all in one sort of area. I think it's like a cul-de-sac where like food trucks are at also. Mm -hmm. um, so we serve there it's from uh, I think 10 to one. I may have different times on that application. Okay. Or, or nine to one. We have 10 to 2 p.m. here. 10 to two, okay, so it's no later than two o'clock. Okay. All right, great. I don't have any I don't, I mean, you done this event before at the park so you've got your setup down and we have yes yeah um and did i do everything in the application all all I there so mm -hmm. yeah. i wasn't sure if i, I just forgot yeah no i think you're good okay i'll make a motion then i move to approve the application for short-term liquor license for abandoned building brewery llc as outlined in item number four on the agenda uh second that all in favor aye, aye. thanks thank you thank you Item number five, application for short-term liquor license, Headwater Cider, Inc., date and time, Sunday, October 20th, 2019, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, also, Look Park, 300 North Main Street, Florence, Happy Valley, Half Marathon. Can you state your name for the record, please? Yes, so I'm Jesse Cooley. I'm the director of Big Brothers Big Sisters in Hampshire County. So, um, I'm here to represent the license for Headwater Cider. It's really the same situation as a van and building yeah. there an additional you're going to be set up in the same parking lot there at the end of that okay mm -hmm. okay great have you ever done this before yes okay excellent the only thing i'm noting is that for some reason it's 10 a.m to 2 p.m on the previous um, right. application at 9 a.m to 1 p.m i know I'm sorry for that, that glitch or is that yeah it's just two. about the time that we'll be serving versus setting up so people will be set up by nine but really wouldn't serve until at the earliest 10 when runners are back so there's would, it's the same would you like us to change that to uh, 10 to 2 then sure for that the record yeah yes. okay Is there a motion? Uh, sure, I will make a motion to include, approve the application for a short term of liquor license for Headwater Cider Inc. for um, Look Park as detailed in item number five of the agenda. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you. you. I encourage you all to come. It's a great event. Yes. <laughs> Um, item number six, application for short-term liquor licenses, Click Workspace, Nine and a Half Market Street, Wine and Malt. Um, 
meeting time, Friday, October 11th, 2019, 7 to 9 p.m. The events at Click Unit Performance, or is it Music Performance? And then uh, Wednesday, October 23rd, 2019, 5 to 8 p.m. Is that lunch, uh, launch party? Hi, can you state your name for the record? Hey, it's Tiffany Bardron. Thanks for coming, Tiffany. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the uh, event, please? Um, so the music event is just another one of a quick music series right. for the fall. Um, it's a band coming from Boston. Their music is a heritage um, music for Jewish refugees. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot more information on the on the um, Facebook page if you're interested or on our website. Um, and then the Gazette event is just their launch party for their new headliner and stuff um, since they've redone their sponsoring click as well as we have right. a partnership with them so they're using our space for their launch party <laughs> okay great the 23rd yes it is the 23rd yeah okay. i got a confirmation finally okay excellent i have no further do you have any questions yeah. i don't have any questions this is better but i assume it's the same as yeah. usual yeah <laughs> You like to make a motion? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve the short term liquor licenses for Click Workspace for the two events on October 11th and October 23rd as outlined in item number six in the agenda. Second that, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, item number seven application for change of BVA Sanctuan Inc., 84 Pleasant Street. The previous BVA is Asian Taste. New uh, DBA is Tai Tai, so it says you've got all your uh, documentation. Can you state your name for the record, please? Uh, my name is Kenny Callas. I'm going to you. Okay, thank you for coming. Um, so we're good on yeah. all of the uh, paperwork that mm -hmm. needs to be done. And we just basically changed the name. Yeah. So. I don't have questions. So, yeah. <laughs> You want this one? Yes, I'd love okay. to um, approve the, uh, make a motion to approve uh, the change of DBA um, as detailed in item number seven of the, of, uh, the agenda. Aye. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Take care. I just realized it just filtered through that you said the 11th for the quick music event, and it's actually the 18th. Because our, our, our Arts Night Out event is the 11th. I'm so sorry oh, I just put okay. on the wrong date there. No worries. We have the Gazette event, right? But not the Click News. I caught it. Is the time still right? Seven and, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Everything's the same. Okay. I just realized. Oh, Thank you. Sorry. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Item number eight application for short term liquor license, Silverscape Designs. Uh, date and time Friday, November 29th, 2019, 12 to 5. Saturday, November 30th, 2019, 12 to 5, and December 1st, 2019, um, 12 to 5. Locations 1 King Street and annual customer appreciation event, Wine in the Malls. Can you state your name for the record? I'm Jane Merrill, General Manager. Hi, Jane. Thank Hi. you for coming. Tell us a little bit about your functions. I think you've had it every year, haven't you? Yeah, me? this is actually the 44th year yeah, of our <laughs> customer appreciation party. Yeah. <laughs> I've actually every attended, year. so. Oh, <laughs> all 44 years? No. <laughs> I'm not saying that. Old. Uh, <laughs> it's becoming a very large event lately. So, yeah, it's just for our customers and Thanksgiving weekend party. Fantastic. Right. I have no questions. Okay? No, I see Stilettos, the distributor and provider, which they usually are. Yep. yep so nothing's yep. different. Yeah, they've been there 44 years, too. So. Yes. <laughs> I have no questions. No questions here. Um, I'll make a motion. I make a motion to approve the application for the short term liquor license for Silverscape Designs for the event as outlined um, in agenda item eight. A second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, here's tomorrow. <coughs> That'll be great. Because I'm going to be off tomorrow. Okay, okay thank thanks. You. Um, item number nine application for short term liquor license, Friends of Children, Inc., uh, Friday, November 1st, 2019, 6 to 9 p.m., Northampton Center for the Arts, 33 Holly, Holly Street. Um, 
arts auction benefit wine and malt. Can you state your name? Sure. Eric? My name is Susan Swift. I'm the development director for Friends of Children. Hi, Susan. Thank you for coming. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. This is a benefit arts auction for our focus program. We are an advocacy program for foster children. Um, and this is focused on our focus program, which supports and mentors um, young adults who are aging out of foster care from 18 to 26. Great. Um, can you identify the space for us that's going to be held? It's going to be held in the main area of uh, the Northampton Center for the Arts. Not the theater, though? No. Okay. All right. Great. Um, tips, insurance, I have no further questions. I have no questions. Since the paperwork is in order. Yeah. Um, so I'll make a motion to approve the short term liquor license for Friends of Children Inc. because detailed in item nine of the agenda. And a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. Take Pleasure care. Event. Item 10, application for short-term liquor license, Dwellings Art, Inc., Saturday, October 12, 2019, 1 to 11 p.m., uh, Northampton Center for the Arts, 33 Hollow Street, uh, Dwellings Art Festivals, Wine and Malt, and if you could state your name for the record, please. Hi, I'm Kate Simpson, I'm one of the co-directors of Dwellings. Hi, uh, Kate, thank you. Thanks. Um, kind of the same space, same idea? Yep. Um, we're going to be using that main lobby and the flex space, but the bar will be set up in the lobby. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Because yeah, the theater is not quite ready. So, all right. And have you done this before? This is our first time doing this festival. Okay. All right. What type of, is it going to be like a, will items be for sale or is it more of a showcase? Um, so there's, going to be two stages inside, and there will be music and poetry workshops, mm -hmm. but there will be some, like, art vendors on site as well. Okay. Great. Any questions? I do not have any questions. <laughs> I will make a motion then to <coughs> approve the application for the short-term liquor license for Dwellings Art Incorporated uh, on the date and time as outlined in item number 10 on the agenda. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Have a good event. Thank you. Item 11, application for short-term liquor license, Pioneer Valley, Valley Guild, um, Thursday, December 12, 2019, 6 to 7 p.m. Academy of Music, 274 Main Street, VIP reception for the Nutcracker, Wine and Malt. Hi, can you state your name, please? Hi, hey, Noel Serafino, PVB board member. Oh. Uh, thanks for coming. Sure. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Sure, so this is a thank you event for our uh, sponsors and program book advertisers. We have done this for past years. Um, right. And we have a reception followed by a sneak peek dress rehearsal of the Nutcracker. Okay, excellent. I have no questions. Yeah. Generally, it's out. Uh, is this it? Oh on the stage in, in there or down right. in the main so lobby? So the reception portion takes place in the lobby. Okay, yeah. great. All right. I've attended before and it's very nice yeah. to know that. <laughs> <laughs> right, so. um, I'll make a motion to approve the short-term liquor license for Pioneer Valley Ballet Guild as detailed in item 11 of the agenda. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. 12, application for a charity wine license, Northampton Education Foundation, Inc. Um, date time, December 3rd, 2019, 6 to 8 p.m., Smith College Campus Center. It's a fundraising event. Um, hi, can you hi. Say your name? Elizabeth Horn. Hi. hi. Thank you, Elizabeth, for coming. Can you tell us a little bit about this, please? So it's going to be sort of a celebration of the end of our endowment campaign, and we're also trying to raise money to finish up the campaign. So we'll be inviting about 150 people and having wine, Smith College and cater hors d'oeuvres. We'll have a, some musical performances from 6 to 8. Fantastic. Yeah. Great. Uh, campus center, so. It's in the Carroll room upstairs. Okay. I have no further questions. You guys have any? I have no questions. Mm -hmm. The work is in order. Yeah. I'll make a motion then to approve the application for a charity wine license for the Northampton Education Foundation on the date and time as outlined in agenda item 12. 
I'll second all in favor. Aye. 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 Thank, you. Thank you so much. Um, just what comes next? You send it in, and then they send us. So I will send this to the ABCC tomorrow, okay. and then it, it, usually these are a quick turnaround, and okay. then they just may either mail or email back a, an approved um, application, okay. and then I print the license and let you know when it's ready to be picked up. Perfect. Okay. Thanks so much. Yeah. Take care. Okay. Item thirteen: application for short-term liquor licenses, Academy of Music, two seven four Main Street. Request fee waiver it's for October 11, 2019, 9 to 11 p.m. S um, Suicide Girls, Blackheart, Burlesque, and Friday, no November 22, 2019, 8 to 11 p.m. Last podcast on the left. Hi. Hi. Can you state your name, please? Melissa Cleary Pearson. Hi, Melissa. Thanks. For Hi. Coming. So. Out in the lobby? Yep. Yeah. And in the theater. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, usual. Yep. The usual. There you go. <laughs> okay. Thanks for coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's one. <laughs> so I will make a motion to approve the applications for short term liquor licenses for the Academy of Music as detailed in item number 13 of the agenda. And which is not listed. Oh, yeah, there it is. And uh, also a motion to approve the fee waiver. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Melissa. Uh, 14, discussion and possible vote to determine the fairway bond amount for Osaka, Japanese. Okay, so in looking at Osaka's violations, so we went with 180,000, which is a rough estimate. But I feel like we need to be, it needs to be determined whether it's the exact amount and whether it's the penalty amount or the total citation amount. So do we also include restitution or do we just go off what their penalty was? Well, it said, didn't it clarify exactly that it was penalty? It was three times the penalty is what I thought that, it, that we set up before. Okay, so in that case, it wouldn't be going off the fifth, the sixty grand. Right. It'd be going off the ten grand. So they overpaid the first year. Well, if that's what we agree with, if that's what you is. decide on. Um, but then I feel like. Um, Why did we have sixty? Is sixty four thousand something they paid? Or? Sixty grand was the total cit citation amount. Ten of that was the penalty, and fifty of that was the restitution. Which amount. I think we weren't so, we weren't thinking of it in terms of the breakdown. We were thinking right. of it in terms of the total being sixty grand. Uh -huh. And yeah, it dawned I mean, on me like three days ago. Yeah. Didn't they buy their first with three times the sixty? So that's why yeah. they're all yeah. like, oh my god. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I mean, it could be either way. I just think it, we should. Well, I would say that since the whole point of a wage bond is to guarantee that they can pay out if they were to violate again, yeah. then we should be including the restitution as well, right? Because it's going to be the amount. actual payment that they needed to yeah, but, uh, their um, employees. It should be restitution, really, shouldn't it? Yeah. Instead of penalty added, I mean, shouldn't it be the fifty thousand dollars? Oh, so it's a just, uh, that's no, the it's, the question. Is um, it just can I just make note yeah. that the two other licensees that got these judgments, there was no restitution about. It was just okay. a penalty because it was um, like employing a minor and not keeping true and right. accurate right. payroll records. Yeah. So there was no restitution about in there. Right. So. I mean, I would say. Well, then you should go, to be fair, you have to go with penalty then. You can't overcharge one and then. You know what I mean? It just. But to Helen's point, the restitution is how much they stole, so it should be it's that gotta amount. Cover. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be able yeah. to cover that amount. Right. Yeah. I mean, in for. Well, why don't we do it so that it covers both cases? So if there's restitution and penalty, it covers everything. But if there's not, it is whatever the, the fine is, you know, so the penalty. And that way, there, it's always covering because Osaka seems to be a case that's outrageous. I mean, yeah. no one else is. That I would think of, I wouldn't even think right. that's it's possible. Completely. But you know, I don't think anyone else is ever going to try and do that. I would guess, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Right. I also thought no one would ever steal from me. But, so. <laughs> so in 
that case, I would say it has to be the total citation amount. But if you look on the first page, there's no citation amount number. It's just a penalty, total penalty due. So I think what Brian's saying and maybe we're agreeing is that we say whatever the charges are, be it penalty or restitution or a combination yeah. of the yeah. two. Because those are the total. two things that it would be, right? Yeah. Yeah. Restitution, penalty. Restitution and penalty time. equals the total citation amount. Right. Okay, because yep. that's right. what they did the first year. Yeah. So, yeah. so you just keep it like that, and then yes, you know the bottom line is, hey, you know, stay on board, don't steal. Right. Mm -hmm. so. so yeah, so it's kind of open in the way that it's worded here, right? It says three times the amount imposed upon the judgment for wage law violation. Is that? That would be the does penalty and the restitution. Does that incorporate everything the way the language is there? I think it does. Yes. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to make sure we, we all were, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I can verify that with attorney C. Well, um, okay, so everyone's on the same page then. I think if you look at the minutes the first time he came to our, our board here, I, I, you. I know, but if you look for the part where he'll actually say, what he uh, recommended, so which was I think all in. Which is what do you put? Yeah. You three it, times the amount. Well, it is interesting because yeah. I asked for that one specifically those minutes since I wasn't here, and it sounds like it, there was a discussion of five times or three times. He said three and he or five times. Three to lower. five times. Yeah. 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 So I didn't know that it was even as high as we never even went as. Yeah. yeah. It was not. Well, and at the time we didn't have. So I don't think we had that. Not that huge number. No. Yeah. It was, yeah. Or it was, like, no, it was a few. It was like, yeah. like Oriental taste. And right. Like were really right. Well. So that's that brings back the point that I brought up last time was, or a couple times ago is, if you're under a certain say say ten thousand or under, you can go five times if you feel like it. You know what I mean? But if as you grow. And you're going to do that, and so now it's 60, 60 some odd thousand dollars. You know, let them get their wage bond. But then that also isn't fair because yeah, it's a if you're you get a right. higher judgment, then you get you have to pay less. Then you get to pay less. Not at all. They paid the restitution and the ten thousand dollar fine. Well, but that sixty grand was something that was their fault, and then it's like Oriental Chase. Okay, they they didn't they weren't as bad, so why should they have to pay more? No, I'm just saying that if he's if, if that's what he meant by it, you know what I mean. So from well, three you, to five, you went you. I know, but he brought up the three to five. Yeah. So I'm trying to make sense of that. Why oh. would you say three to five times? I think he was just kind of throwing it out there. Yeah, it's outrageous. Yeah. I already you already know how I I feel. I feel like the guy had to pay. The state's already got something in for provisions. It's too much, you know. So he's already paid restitution and ten thousand dollar fine. How much do you gotta keep kicking them, you know, a business owner? Yeah, so. <laughs> but well, this was a lot of money that was stolen, right? right. Oh, but, he paid yeah. it, but he paid it back plus a five. So my point right, is, but he, why do you have to keep kicking people? You know what I mean? It's like, good God. Well, the state already has laws in place. I and mean, then you don't pay, you go to jail. I mean, now they're gonna have the commission come down on them. Like, it, to me, it's just redundant. State law also stipulates that cities and towns have the ability to make their own more stringent I restrictions, and I don't they're allowed to do that, and that's just the way I think the rules. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So let's make a motion to just clarify, I guess, or a vote on all in three times, uh, whatever the. Well, that is the total citation. Uh, yes, yeah. and uh, maybe this could be two part. I just want to clarify for Osaka's sake. They're on year two, and their total amount, I believe, it's 62,566. So should it be 62,566 times two, or should it be rounded out? Which be exact? So do you want to round this... up or down to the nearest? Hang on one sec. To I mean, clarify. I don't have on here, but I think on here it's a six. On this. Well, the other two. Yeah. Oh, oh, plus yeah. the two. Plus Thank two. Okay. Um, I yeah, I think we should. You know, that we were asking for this all when we general when we just rounded it. Um, yeah, no, we should we should probably. Happening. Happening. We all just kind of fly <laughs> yeah. out to see where. Things so I think at this so point no. we should do it. Yeah. Um, do no, an so actual write off sixty two five six six, and double that. 
right? So yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the second part. The first part is just clarifying the language in case there's any issues. And this is clarified language. This is this is what you're going to be voting on the next number next. Yes. Um, oh, the next item. Just clarifying that judgment amount mm -hmm. in the in the language to be adopted includes the penalty due and the restitution. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's a total of those two numbers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so that's is that something we need to vote on or register? Yes, I think so. Just for. Just oh. for clarity, so if there's any question, people can look back and see that we, in fact, we clarified it, and it's part of the record. So then would I make a motion to clarify that when we speak of the amount imposed upon the judgment, um, that that includes penalty and restitution, uh, e.g. the total citation amount? for a restaurant. Does that make sense? <laughs> so it's a, is it a motion to clarify or a motion to? Um, well, it seems, now should we do this? Because we're talking about specifically for Osaka, I'm wondering if we should vote to adopt first and, mm -hmm. then, um, and then do the clarification yeah, for the amount for Osaka because it's going to be based on adopting that um, yeah. the wage compliance section. So are you going to address in your motion for fi number 15 that it's based off, that the total is based off the penalty and the total citation? You're going to include that in there? I think we can. Is that what you, is that what you yeah. But if first you're saying vote on the, the uh, standard that we apply to everybody mm -hmm. and in that same motion you can right or make a second motion to Don't. address osaka can we do that if it was oh. on the agenda though no they're both on the agenda okay um so can we do sort of <laughs> like a, a big motion to a can we make a motion to adopt this which is number 15 um and then oh, with clarification that, yes. you know, as I was saying before. That, that makes more sense that, because that. you can't really motion to clarify. Right, right, right. Which is a good, you made that point, so yeah. Okay. I think you just, like, you move to adopt section 4-2 and with clarification that right. the total amount is, in, is the penalty amount and the total the citation the the combined. Imposed from the judgment for each law violation. I guess that would be the language. <clears throat> okay, so do we need to previously then have a discussion about whether we are going to go ahead and adopt this? So did you the language here? What was the question? Well, well so I, I guess I'm sort of jumping to 15. Yeah, no, we can go, yeah. so we Mr. Should. Chair, is that yeah. okay if we go to 15? Of course. Okay. And so, so this discussion right now is whether the language as drafted by Attorney Seawald is do we want, yes, sufficient. Do we want to adopt that? I would say yes. Um, it said, yeah, the amount imposed upon the judgment, I read that as including both restitution and civil penalty. Yeah, right. So I guess but when we make the motion to adopt, we can just clarify. When mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so no discussion. <laughs> we got it. Discuss. So, and just so, since you were not here, Natasha, yes. does this, the B make sense to you? What it is, is a, a it does. if someone's coming into the city, Yes, because when they, they, when they fill out their application, they have to say whether or not yeah. they violated it someplace else. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, we just have to go on. It's been one year, two years, or three years since they get imposed to that yeah. wage bond. Yeah, so months. if it's been two years and they're working on year three, then they would only have to get a wage bond for the amount that they. Yeah, because it'd be their third year, 
So yeah. it's one times the amount, so it's basically just the amount that they were imposed upon. Right, okay. Yeah. All right, should I go for it, or do we want to have a discussion on any of this, the language in there? I don't think so, I mean, it all makes sense to me. Are you basically just going to, uh, to adopt section 4.2? Mm -hmm. yep. Clarification of yep. using you know the the entire penalty and restitution. Yep. So, okay. so I'll go right. So I will make a motion to adopt section four dash two grant or renewal of license wage compliance into the rules and regulations regulations um, with the clarification that when it states the amount imposed upon the judgment for wage law violation that includes both the penalty and this sorry the civil penalty and the restitution if they exist i'll second that all in favor aye 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 great <clears throat> so discussion item 16. no we gotta go back to 14. thank you for walking us through that back to 14 <laughs> and determine the fair wage bond amount for osaka so basically you're going to take this is it 62 so it's 62566. 62, 62566. Five, five, six, six. So it's $125,132. Okay, um, I don't think you need a motion now, so because now it is in our rules right. and regulations, um, we right. just adopted it, so this so. is just our formality. Right, yeah. so that's yeah. what he needs to get it in. One, two, five, one, three, two. Okay. Yep. Great. Okay. So item 16 uh, discussion and vote to determine outcome of all alcohol club license currently held by Pine Grove, Golf Club, Inc., in accordance with Chapter 144, Acts of 2008. Okay, so he had a seasonal all alcohol license and chapters. Chapter 144 Acts of 2008 say that for Northampton, the seasonal all alcohol licenses um, are authorized to convert them to annual licenses for a fee of $10,000. Years ago, he converted it and now he they closed and he came in asked, oh, there he is. Yeah. Because, <laughs> perfect timing, um, because part of the act um, says that if a license converted under this act is canceled, revoked, or no longer in use, it shall be returned physically with all of the legal rights, privileges, and restrictions to the licensing authority, which may then grant the license to a new applicant at the same location or at a location within the same economic development zone. So, I think, hi, you're here uh, just everybody? in time. Huh? But you're just in time. I had to bring Shirley's pocketbook up to the Elks because she had it locked in her car. Oh, okay. Uh, so we just started talking about it. So uh, you're. What do you mean? I'm number 16 on the agenda. You're number 16. You went through. Everyone's already come and gone. We are very efficient. Yes. They're really? Quite, yeah. quite your timing. I can't it's perfect. Things have yeah. changed. <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh, so, um, it's up to you guys to determine whether Pine Grove has a leeway, I guess, to to transfer the license, or whether you want to take it back and reissue it to a new licensee. Um, and I asked Mr. Morello here to come to the meeting to explain um, where you are at with trying to find a buyer for your license. I'm still trying. You're still trying? Yeah. Okay. So. My intentions are to uh, renew the license, however, because I'm still open. Right. And, uh, but the golf course itself is sold. Right. Except I haven't seen any green, but the ones I'm mowing, they're <laughs> not coming out with any money. So, uh, but I guess that'll happen. Hope. And uh, but that's only the golf course part. The clubhouse and the facilities around it are uh, not part of that package, and they won't probably be moved or uh, sold um, for at least six months. I'm guessing. 
open. But uh, I intend to just stay open for the clubhouse, for the bar. So, so I'm going to apply, you know, I'm going to renew the license. That's what I'm planning on doing. And then, frankly, at some point in time, I'll look for, you know, to get a buyer and transfer the license then. So you're planning to uh, continue operating into 2020? Yeah. Okay. If anything changes, I guess I'll have to come see you, right? Well, yes, because... Yeah. Um, we also have the pocket license. <clears throat> Sorry? We also have the pocket license. Well, not yet, because he's still going to be operating. No, I'm saying once, if it closes. If it closes, and yeah. Six months and since months, his right? license is under special legislation, you'll have to determine whether you want to take it back or allow him to transfer it. Um, I wasn't aware that he was going to continue operating at the schools. <clears throat> Just reminding that uh, I've had a license for 50 years. Yeah. Here. Yeah. I'll be a, not a full one, but that was not my regard because I was shot down seven times to convert it to a. Is that true? Seven times? Yeah. How come? May I ask? Well, they said I didn't need it. Huh. Because the of the. License Commission? Because, yeah. Because of a uh, summer activity, yeah. except that I'm open in the winter for skiers as well. But that was their explanation. Seven times, I couldn't believe it. Wow. Well, so we've learned a open discussion on that. I mean, is that what we're doing here? So, I mean, it's of my opinion, I'm pro business. I would, I would prefer to see him, Mr. Varillo transfer it or sell it to whoever he deems necessary or fit to he certainly put his fair share of money into that license over the years so um, he should have the right to uh, to sell it or transfer it or however you want to do it Would you sell a building if you want to include it in the building or whatever you want to do I think that's my opinion and we can vote on that or discuss more and, and so on and so forth so. well if it's still if the pub's still open <coughs> But may, is being used. But then. he may sell it in six months. Right, sure, at which point. <coughs> right. the, the well, then you'd have to come before us anyway for right. transference or sale or whatnot. Right. Yeah, do I have to come with, with the buyer? No, or? it would just be the buyer. It would just be you the actually buyer. wouldn't have to come. Right. You'd, at that point, you'd be pretty removed. I'll let you know anyway. Okay, yeah, right. you'd, be really, you'd be removed from it at that point. The only thing you would have to do were those two documents that I emailed you. Yeah, I meant to ask you, can I do that now? Yeah, sure. Um, the certificate of compliance, I can't find it. The good standing one I got, I already have it, but um, this, where do I find certificate of compliance? So I sent you the link on how to get it. That didn't help. Maybe I can find some, another, an easier way to get it to do you. Do I go through the Mass Connect where I pay taxes? You no. know, I'm not sure, but... Or is it Quest where I pay? Because I got the impression for somebody that it was an employment issue. It is. It's a, com it's a certificate of compliance from the Department of Unemployment Assistance. Okay, so I have to go there and, and hunt for it, right? I believe, but why don't I send you... Why don't I look into it tomorrow and send you uh, maybe a better link that can help you find it better? Okay, yeah, because I looked around for a while when they were doing the Quest payments for the quarter, for the third quarter, and okay, I, I didn't see any of it. I might not have. Okay, that's fine. Stuff. I'll I'll look into it for you for tomorrow. For tomorrow. Thank you. So just to clarify that, so the, what are the hour, the days and hours of operation for the clubhouse? Right now, it's about 10 o'clock in the morning to uh, 7 or 8 o'clock at night. And is that seven days a week? Yeah. Even though the golf course itself is closed or sold? Well, I'm still open. Uh, nine holes is still open. Oh, okay. That's why I made the comment. <laughs> I can see more okay. greens mowing them than I yeah. <laughs> going to the back. Um, but that you... will close. I can't, I can't keep doing this. I mean, it's just crazy. And I don't know when the city's going to act. Right. They... They had a thing uh, 
that the state approved. I guess different departments have to approve the money for the uh, what they're going to do with it. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I'm still waiting. And you keep the clubhouse open for cross country skiers. Yeah, okay. I will if uh, if they're ready. I don't know. Like I said, they told me the closing date on the court on the rounds would be. Uh, sometime in January, but the agreement I have with the city goes all the way to April, okay. so I, I know as much as you do, I guess. So in that case, when it goes to transfer it, then we're going to have to pull them back in here in a few months. Really? So you either think, if you want to do that or make a decision today. I would rather wait until it becomes a, yeah. an actual agenda item. You know, that, that the reality is, has occurred before we make that decision about the, as it's outlined in Agenda 16. Yeah, because we're, we can't make assumptions about what the situation will be, whether right. it's a set, whether it's selling like someone else is taking it at that location or if it's something that we would have to take back. So I don't know if right. there's a motion we could make at this point, unless I'm missing something. No, I guess I was or, because I was, when he came in, he said, I want to see if I can transfer my license. So I, I guess I didn't maybe. So we're 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 of the agreement that he can transfer his license, he can sell it. We're not gonna take it back. Yeah, no, I unless he closes doors and doesn't and he's not right. operational. Then right. If it becomes a pocket to, license, then yes, then we would we'll have to back. take it back. Yeah. yeah. So it has to be utilized. Right. Yeah. Do you have any prospective buyers? I had one, but uh, I guess it disappeared. <laughs> but uh um, I called. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Are you the one now? Yeah, you, you said, oh, it's sold. So, oh, right. I said, okay. <laughs> I'll jump off this board. No. <laughs> They're, uh, I don't know. Uh, I guess the Sakura oh. license is uh, being batted around also. Yep, that one's yeah. for sale. Yeah. It was what? It, it, yeah, that one's for sale. Okay, yeah. I, uh, I don't know what other ones are. In this. I know there's people looking, aren't there? Isn't Hyra looking for a... He's looking for one. I know Northampton Bicycle is actively looking for a buyer. I know the World War II Club is in talks with somebody. And I also know that there's a supposedly a purchase and sale being signed this week, or Sakura, thankfully, because oh. it's been a pocket license for almost two years now. Right. Oh, we should have. Oh, well, that's another discourse. Yeah, yeah. I don't recall ever being told that till just recently, when I purchased this license, when I was there, okay, whatever. I, nobody ever said anything about. I assumed that I had I had the license. Period. Um, I didn't know that I could not sell it, uh, or that you guys could take it back. I so, thought that was right. always the case because you could always refuse the transfer. Yours was not a regular all all alcohol license right from the beginning. You had a special one, so we had special legislation that allowed you to transfer that to all. You know, you had seasonal, correct? Yeah. You were turned down seven times. So when you paid that, now that's that special legislation that. Allowed okay, you to do that. I, that's what I wasn't aware of. That it was uh, conditional, like. Uh, but, yeah, but it's, I mean, I, obviously our discretion. I mean, that's what's written. Yeah, that's what's up to you. Yeah, yeah I, I maybe at the time the clerk maybe didn't inform you of it, or I, right. I don't know. They I just got the check. Yeah. Was it was 10000 Yeah, 10000 yeah. And uh, does the, say I were to sell it and you approve it, now does is that carry with the other, the person that's buying it? Yes. It's still, okay. It's still part of the special. So, does that or no uh, devalue it? No. I don't think so. I mean, it's still an all alcohol license. 
Yeah, and, and you still, but you so have again, to approve. But you have to approve the sale anyway. Uh, so again, it could be up to the discretion of the commission. So, like you tried seven times, apparently whoever was on that commission <laughs> at that time saw fit that it wasn't necessary. But you know, we're at the point that you know you've put a lot of money into that. You have a business, and I would like to see you be able to actually turn that into something for yourself. So yeah. You get a little back. So. It's like retirement. Like you need it. I've well, been strike that. I've been 50 years. <laughs> I'm tired, tired, tired. I hear you. Um, so anyway, the only, other th the only issue is, or not issue, but the only other is the pocket license situation. So. Yeah. You have to stay open. You have to stay open and use oh, it. Oh, Or, you know, you, anything beyond, I think it's a six month period. I'm, I'm ad-libbing right now. I know that it came to a head with uh, Eric Shore in, in, the, in the city and, um, but- Well, there were several of them that were, yeah. yeah. But that's what you mean by pocket license when they- Just like you have it, but you're not you using it. Yeah. yeah. You know, so it's not something you can hold on to for a year and a half and hope to sell it. You yeah. gotta actively try to get rid of it or, or make something of it, so. Um, you know, and I don't know if you're trying to sell that as part of the value of the building and land. Otherwise, people like Highbrow, I know, are looking and right. And there's yeah, there's always, always people looking. So if you if you're ready for people to start calling you, I can add you to a list of people that that are looking to sell. Because people call all the time saying, who, who, "Do you have any liquor licenses available? Who's trying to sell?" So if you'd like, I can add you to that list. I might as well. Okay. I'm because I'm uh, Dagmar will be holding down the ship until I. Will she I'm be there all winter, keeping it open or not? Yeah, she uh, she's around. I'm going to Florida. Yeah, I know you go every year. Yeah. In uh, November, beginning of November. Okay. Well, uh, so your license is going to be need to be renewed in November. Yeah, I, w I wondered why. Uh, because I haven't got word of the building inspector coming around, the building and fire come around every year in yep. October. They are planning on making phone calls next week to start setting up inspections. Oh, really? Yep. Um, so I'll be emailing your, your renewal paperwork this year. Okay. Okay, and then you'll just need to sign it um, in the month of November like you usually yep. do. Same thing, yeah. Same thing, yep. Okay, so... I don't know how you want to proceed. I don't know that we, do we have to? You don't have to vote. We don't have to vote on anything. No. Really, just kind of, it's our discussion, you know, our <clears> discretion. <throat> so we kind of just, until you make um, a move on selling it or transferring it to someone else, we really don't this need to worry about it. We can table it for now, correct? Yeah, you will have to vote, vote on it eventually. Correct, but, yeah. yeah. When it becomes like, like Natasha said, a, an actual agenda item. Then the new buyer. Well, it is an agenda item. No, I right, but when it either. when it's uh, necessary, like when we know that he's yeah. When the transfer is out. Yeah, or not using it. In the meanwhile, you can put it on your list along with a tractor, bulldozer, and all the other equipment I'm selling. <laughs> I'll put the liquor license on there. Yeah. yeah. So you're safe for now, Gil. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thanks for coming. Have a good oh. one. Talk to you soon. Yep. I reckon so. Um, item 17, approval of minutes, September 4, 2019. Brian and Natasha to vote. I read those minutes. I did too. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of September 4th, 2019. Uh, second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And also September 27, 2019, Brian Helen's vote. And I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of September 27, 2019. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And then clerks update report on information from 2019 ABCC outreach uh, seminar attachment. Okay, so I went to an APCC seminar. It was riveting. Um, there was a few <laughs> points that I took 
took from it that I oh. thought you guys maybe should want to know about that we've either touched on or addressed in the past. So um, the violations that licensees get from the ABCC, those are supposed to be used for progressive discipline. So we're not supposed to be overlooking those and saying, oh, those don't matter. Like well, Those are supposed to be used as we if they're city violations, we're supposed to be looking at those and see how many they've had from the ABCC and the city, so not just city. Okay. Um, so in this 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 next one just like struck me as to what um, Gil was saying because local board should be approving licenses based on whether there's a public need. So that board probably thought that there wasn't a public need for that license to be annual because it's a golf course, so they don't need to be operating. Right. So that's, that is that's probably what happened. Um, local boards should be approving licensed manager, like managers of records based on good character and fitness, um, good moral character, and fitness is vaguely defined as the ability to perform to one professional work in an open, honest, and forthright manner. That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, Licensees that aren't operating every day, someone in some one of the local like needs of a different town asked, um, because they have a few licensees that don't operate every day, as do we. Um, and they, the executive director was there and he said that the local boards has the authority to call licensees in for an informational hearing, which then puts the licensee on notice. And from there, they have six months to either sell the license or change their operating hours. And then the board um, at that time can revoke it if necessary. As long as you tell them what, what they are doing, what you are, as long as the board tells the licensee what the board is doing, then there won't be a problem. Like, as long as you just like, keep them informed, like they, they're, they, they're, there can be no like uh, backlash or nothing can fall on you guys. Right. As long as you get them noticed. Really? So if an establishment is open, has an alcohol license and they're open Tuesday through Saturday? We have the right to revoke that. Is just, if it's exactly. not if it's not their approved operating hours, yes. If the cabin is never open, the basement's never open. Those like if you guys wanted, you could let's, address that. Let's get on it. And and it's the idea that there's other people who would like that license and they will use it every day of the week. So so, so when, it, when you have an on call license. It, you're saying I will be open every day of the week? Yeah, or? pretty. I, I will have to verify, but I'm pretty sure it's in Chapter 138, Section 12, which is where all the licenses are, the on-premise licenses are, like, governed by. So that's, sorry, oh, sorry. go ahead. No, yeah, last question for now, and then, I'll, then I will see to Natasha. But um, is there an alternative? Can we say, well, if there's no alternative licenses there for, say, you're operating three days a week? Certain. No, but I think at that point, it. I believe that you then have to come to the commission and ask to Do change your operating hours. Okay, so it's right. just about right. operating hours as listed. So I, I believe, but I will have okay. to verify that because I'm pretty sure there's something that stipulates what your operating hours should be in Mass General Law. So are, the Calvin is open when? Just when there's a venue? Yeah, just oh, when there's a show. show. So, like that, for that was my question out. was, so does, when the Calvin, just as an example, got their liquor license for then the Calvin on the first floor in the bar upstairs, which was the blue room, they stipulated their hours of operation. So the expectation is that that license holder should be operating during those originally outlined hours of operation. Is that a question? <laughs> it's sort of questions like clarif like making sure I'm clear on that. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. So if a business owner say that, that in that same situation came to us and wanted to change the hours of operation, they could do that and the, everything would still be in good standing. I believe, no. but I will have to check on, check on that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So otherwise, you can be like Academy of Music and everyone else that comes and lists Gets all your days. Yeah. Just and do that it. once a month and get an all then, alcohol yeah, license for those to, days only. Could, and that caps it. Like, non -profit, only non oh, all 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 right. right. So, yeah, that would be a gigantic fight. Yeah. So yeah. We get sued. We get sued. Yeah. Yeah. 
just I just want yeah. you guys to know. And then one last so thing that we much. battle all the time is yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I thought we couldn't approve an application contingent upon if it's an ABCC application, but um, you can, we can because once all the documents are collected and it's a complete application, then you have three days to act on it. So, like, so you're saying we can or cannot? You say can, and I always okay. thought like, okay, I have three days. I was like panicking that we had three days, but. And so I asked that, and he said, no, once you can, they can approve it on a contingency, and then say a week later, they hand you all the documents, then you then you have a complete application, and at that point, the clock starts for the three days. Okay, so it's three. And it's been retroactively okay. approved. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That, those were my major things that I thought were worth noting. And then you have one Bridge Street. Yeah, yeah, so they their manager of record was approved on uh, July 3rd. She still has not picked up the license. We do not have her TIP certification. I've called three times. I've left several messages. I've called um, September 11th, September 20th, October 3rd, and... So what would you do, a registered letter saying if we don't have it by this date, we're going to... And so the last two phone calls, I told her that if she didn't come pick it up and provide TIP certification that I was going to bring it, I was going to let the license commission know. It is not a complicated thing to get TIP certified. It is not a complicated so, thing. And you online, yeah. Of course. And it's yeah. like your license, I know it's just a piece of paper, but your license is supposed to be on the premises in a conspicuous place and right. everyone else does it. And, and right. furthermore, she when she came forward, the application to become the manager on record, it was replacing a manager on record who has not had anything to do with to the business, do business for years. years. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's not, and this was, she came in July. July. Mm -hmm. It's, we're working on mid-October now. It's not acceptable. It's unacceptable. Why don't we, why don't we have a letter written, uh, official, um, stating that if you're not here by whatever date we set, an officer will be by the, I mean, we'll close them down until they come and get it, you know? Yeah, they can't, I mean, it, That'll, that'll you know, make it happen. If a, man, if a manager of record has to be in good standing, you know, and, and have certain, like, character, mm -hmm. then we have good to... character and fitness. Yes, yeah, yeah. we have there to don't. have that expectation that, yeah. you know, it's not... She doesn't get it. No. You know, and that she came in on July 3rd and thinks that she it can. And I don't think she's doing it to be bad. The, one, she just doesn't the first phone call yeah. I made, she answered and I talked to her about it and she said, oh, oh, I completely forgot. Oh, yeah. I wasn't aware. And then I like was like, okay, I like need it as soon as possible. And then kept calling and she hasn't answered since. Yeah, she needs Is to there a way you can check to see if people are, you know, go online and see if they're TIP certified? I wonder if there's I a I thought, there. someone told me that there was like a verification thing, but any number I've ever typed in, it's come back with nothing. So I mm. I don't know. Yeah, it's not a complicated thing to do. No, you can do it online. It's very simple. Yeah. Well, maybe you write a letter to um, the owner of the business, you know, or CC him. Is it? It's Claudia. Claudia. It's Claudia. Yeah, yeah. Claudia will, I, I guarantee you when they start getting letters, they're going to make it happen. I mean, that's what we want, right? We want them to just come get the license. Just come get just it. Just sit in my desk. But you like, need to, yeah, but you have to have your tip certified. Yeah, so my fear is that she's yeah. not certified. And I, I look back at the minutes. That's why she's you. And so. I look back at the minutes, and she said it was a Wednesday meeting, obviously, and she said that she was getting certified on Friday, that Friday of that week. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't get certified on Friday that week. But also, I called yeah. September 11th. It's now October. Ninth, it took almost been a month. You know how I could have gotten to certified 30 days in that time, like 30 times over. Mm -hmm. We could have. Hmm, maybe we got it right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, license Thanks. commission's here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna bring these. the windshield. I'm sending her a letter. Yeah. Okay. Stay in case she gets certified. And how team. many days? Yeah. Oh, uh, as 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 <laughs> Is five business days good? Five business days upon receipt of the letter. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you can go out online and get that done in <laughs> half an hour, 
Is that something, does that sound right for the tips? It's, I think it's longer than that, but it is something that you can accomplish online. Is, there's there's plenty home of opportunities. Um, I'm not sure if it's that, like if there's specific <laughs> times sort of set up like a webinar would be, oh, that you sign up in advance for it. So but five business days from receipt of the letter should be fine. If she said, if we have in the minutes, so she said she was already going to do it that week. And I've called her three times. Yeah. So it's like you had ample opportunity. Yes. And if it's, if she's not able to produce that, then her, then Claudio may have to become the manager on record until he his can't. staff. He can't do it no, as a business no, owner. Yeah. No, he can't as a business owner. He's not in the U.S. citizen. So my, my thing is, I would put in that letter. That are five business days for some um, unforeseen reason, you know, is not enough. Then you must contact our office immediately to discuss a, a date. And then if that's so, we're basically shutting them down if that doesn't happen, right? Because you the have the license here. Happen. If you don't get show your tip certified. I mean, if there's somebody else that's tip certified, can they just bring that? Or does it have to be the manager on It has to be the manager of record. Because oh, this person is responsible for the liquor license. Yeah, so we, right. we, so gave, we made a leap of faith that we probably in retrospect right. shouldn't have done. Well, now that's why we're acting. And now so. we won't do that again because we, yep. you know, we had someone come before us who we questioned her on her experience mm -hmm. with liquor licenses or managing a business. One. She didn't have She experience. just started like a week prior. Right. Like, as a she got a tap on the shoulder to be the manager. Is she even record. still employed there? Great question. I don't know. Wow. Yeah. Because the last two times she hasn't answered. But also, I feel like at that point, if someone's calling you and hounding you, you pick up and be like, I don't work there anymore. I would do that. Right. <laughs> yeah, but exactly. Not my problem. Right. So, yeah, I mean, if you want to just send us a draft, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. do that tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Perfect. All right. It's time. Any new business? I'm 19. No. Motion to adjourn. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.